written by Alfie Coy and Robert Powell, loosely based on characters from the King James Version of the Bible. No offense. Russ, Dan, Chloe, Alfie, Kenzie, and Everett are visiting after the show. The Christmas spirit is ablaze in all of them, except for Chloe, who is feeling a bit down. Russ notices Chloe's downtrodden face. What's the matter with you and your downtrodden face? Not excited about Christmas? I don't know. I've just been a little bit depressed lately. What do you mean depressed? Depressed about what? What do you have to be depressed about? Christmas lights everywhere. It's mildly chilly outside. What the hell else do you want? Well, I, I don't know. I just, I just feel a little downtrodden. Yeah, I know. I heard the announcer say it. I heard you say it. You feel downtrodden. I'm sorry, man. I just, had a, I just had a hard time lately. I feel like the gifts I've gotten for people are just crappy, and everything I do just turns into a disaster. I guess I just don't know what Christmas is all about. Poor Chloe is frustrated, exasperated. He yells out in frustration. Isn't there anyone who knows what Christmas is all about? Who the hell are you yelling at? I don't know. It just says in there to yell. So, And also, too, we stole this dialogue straight from uh, Charlie Brown. Well, knock that off. Kill my Christmas vibe. Uh, sorry. I just really want to know the meaning of Christmas. Yeah, you know, I'm with Chloe. I'm sick of this commercial Christmas bull. Sorry. If I see a Kardashian <laughs> Christmas special, I'm going to vomit. All right. I got what you're saying, people. Obviously, they've forgotten what the, the holy day is all about. As Russ speaks, the soft sounds of Hark the Herald Angels Sing begins playing. Thank you kindly there, narrator man. No problem, my brother man. So, y'all bitches want to know what Christmas is all about? Well, allow me to retort. It all started way back over 2,000 years ago in the land of Galilee and a little city called Nazareth. Uh, you want me to play some flashback music? Yeah, please. It's nighttime in Nazareth. All are sound asleep. In the bedroom of the Holy Blessed Virgin Mary, an angel of the Lord appears with a grand whoosh. Hey, hey my name is Gabriel. I'm like real important angel of God. Just, just chill out for a second. You want me to chill? Chill my blessed ass? Who the f are you? And why the f are you in my bedroom with your big ass wings looking like some kind of f up waterfowl? Help me! I say somebody help me as a peasant trying to have his way with me. No, baby, just relax for a second. I need you to calm down. Well, don't you dare me to calm down. I'll shank your super chicken looking ass. Don't think I won't Kentucky fry you with a side of mac and cheese. Damn, that sounds good. All right, you tell. Wait a minute. Who the f are you? I'm the narrator, baby. It's all good. You should listen to my homeboy, Gabriel. He's an archangel. Him and God, they're best buds. Narrated, huh? All right, then. So, what do you want, Bobcat Gabriel? Oh, uh, yeah, I was supposed to tell you there's a baby that's going to be born, and God decided to put that baby in you. What? You telling me that God just decided to take claim of my uterus just like it's his? Uh, yeah, uh, pretty much. And, and, and when was this uh, Lord God planning on telling me this? Uh, it's like right now. Surprise! You're pregnant. So now that that's handled, I gotta go and tell a bunch of wise men what's what's going on. Uh-uh, you ain't gonna drop some like that on me and just bounce on out of her. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I gotta go. Whoosh! The mighty Archangel Gabriel vanishes in a cloud of holy smoke. Oh, hell no! That little peacock-looking fool ain't getting away that easy. And by the way, Mr. Narrator, that holy smoke line, that was a pun. I thought it was all right. Yeah, well, you. Let's move on from here. Thousands of miles away, Gabriel pays a visit to a group of three wise men as they sit around the campfire listening to their transistor radio. Could you please find something on the damn radio? Christmas in the morning. From my wife, Mama Gears, you had to have that sis. Maybe I yell Ron Chapman. Coming up tomorrow, we'll get a visit from Bethlehem Bob and the Nazareth Ninja, plus traffic and weather on North Star 92.5. Hey, here's Sweet Home Alabama again. <laughs> Man, I love Bo and Jim. I hope they're around for another 2,000 years. You and that my sugar radio. Don't you have something better you could be doing? Well, I could play you one of my many country music songs that earned me a CMA Entertainer of the Year award. Oh, no, anything but that. I'm sick of hearing about what your kind of night is. 
Well, if you want, the three of us could hug for a while. Man, if your honky ass tries to hug me, I'm going to put my big black foot so far up your... <laughs> Whoosh! The Archangel Gabriel appears before the wise men. Hey, dudes! What's going on? Hi, I'm Luke Bryan. Would you like a hug? Oh, wow, wow that's great, man. Hey, guys, I'm here to tell you uh, about this big thing that's going on. There's a baby that's going to be born in Bethlehem here in just a little bit. Man, what do we care about some baby being born? No, man, this is this is a special baby. He's going to be like the king of the Jews and stuff. Wow, the king of the Jews. This little tyke sounds like he's going to be a pretty, pretty, pretty big Jew. Yeah, uh, something like that. He's going to be, like, real big, like the king of all kings, like bigger than, than George Michael and Wham all put together. So, uh, what do you want us to do about it? Y'all bitches need to, to, need to go and get, give that baby some presents and stuff, like good stuff, like none of the Hickory Farm sausage and cheese gift packs and stuff. Oh, man, I love sausage and cheese. Can I have some of those? Uh, yeah, whatever. Listen, guys, I got to go right now. Just follow that big, bright star right there in the north. Keep going towards that, and you'll find the baby. Later, dudes. Well, We'll be back to the Russ Martin Show. Return to the Russ Martin Show Christmas special. We find ourselves back in Nazareth, where Joseph and Mary are having a conversation. I would give you what, what do you mean you're pregnant? <laughs> Will you please shut hell up a minute? Ugly, this, 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 come on, this is my favorite part. I'm calling you ugly. I could stick your face in some dough and make some gorilla cookies. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> you suck it I, st I still don't get it. How are you pregnant? Bitch, it's like I done told you. God decided that my hoo-ha, I was basting all the land, and he thought that he was going to put the savior of all mankind up in there for me to give birth to. So what is it? You don't trust me? No. No, I trust you. It's just hard to believe. Oh, what's so hard to believe? God put a baby in my holiest of holies. You got to complain about it, you're going to act like a man and just deal with it, pussy. I can deal with it, but I just don't know for sure. Oh. Okay, you wanna know for sure? You will do this right now? I'll show your ass. Hey, Angel! Angel! Get your bitch ass down here and tell Joseph what the f is up. Poof, the holy Archangel Gabriel appears before them. Hey, uh, what's up, girl? T tell this here sh husband of mine that this baby is a son of God. Uh, yeah, man, homegirl, she's telling the truth. Ha <laughs> ha! Right, bitches, you done heard it. My baby is a holy savior. It might you the conceptiton. They gonna name touchdown passes after me. Uh, yeah, it's cool. Uh, anyway, Joseph, I hear there's a, a census thing happening. You should probably take the baby of yours and uh, go to your hometown of Bethlehem. Uh, okay, if you say so. Yeah, uh, get a move on, like uh, pronto. <laughs> and so Joseph and Mary left for Bethlehem with Jesus in utero. And as Mary and Joseph embarked on a long and arduous journey, so did the three wise men. These camels! Whose blind idea was that to get camels? Man, I love camels. I named my camel Luke Bryan number two because he loves hugs and sex with the lady camels just as much as I do. As they ride, a mysterious man approaches from behind them. Say, hang on a minute there, brother. Who goes there? Hey, guys. Hi, I'm Luke Bryan. Who are you? I'm Rob Riddlemoser from OffTheGrid.com. Hey, have you guys heard that Jesus is coming? Yeah, of course we've heard. What do you think we'll ride these godforsaken camels for? Well, if you were prepared like me, you'd have a horse. Horses are part of my advanced preparedness kit from my website, authorgrid.com. Well, guys, I gotta go. I have to spread the word about Jesus is coming and try and sell everyone buckets of freeze-dried emergency food and cases of surplus military ammunition at authorgrid.com. After a whorish plug, which has nothing to do with the overall plot, the mysterious man rides off into the desert. Offthegrid.com! Look at him! He has a horse! Why couldn't we get horses? Instead, we're stuck with these camels! Hey, man, these camels we riding, they come in menthol. These f***ing camels? Why the f*** 
Did we pick camels? <laughs> I'd walk a mile right now for a horse. Mary and Joseph are making their way across the desert toward the town of Bethlehem. Now, huh? I ain't having this argument again. You heard what that dumbass angel said. Yeah, I, I know what he said, but it's just really hard to believe. I, I still think you're hiding something. Just, just tell me now. Who's it? Joseph, I don't know. I don't said I don't know. Maybe somebody slipped and broke hit my in my thunderbird. All I know is I get this message from that retarded angel saying I'm going to have the king of kings. I'm still not even sure about that. That was a poor excuse for an angel. I wouldn't be surprised if you made love with someone. You around me all the damn time. You tell you tell me when I'm gonna have the time to f somebody else. I was just as surprised when I took that pregnancy test. You know the one where you, you you're supposed to go to the bathroom on it. Took me three times before I figured out they meant to piss on it. Meanwhile, back at the wise man. All right, listen. I'll explain it to you one more time. If you want to watch one show but record another show at the same time, the TV set does not have to be on Channel 3. The TV or the machine has to be on Channel 3. You're saying I can record something I'm not even watching? That's right. Uh, how do you do the clock? Oh, man, you people are dead. Man, it's spooky out here, riding in the desert at night, all alone and stuff. What are you worried about? There's nothing out here. There better not be. And there better not be any clowns hiding in this desert. I'll shoot a goddamn clown. We'll be back to the Russ Martin Show. As we rejoin the action, Mary and Joseph have reached the town of Bethlehem and are searching for a place to stay. I am not staying in some bulls combo motel. Yo, I better find some place with room service. I can't burn down the side without a, a plate of duck larange. I'm surprised I can say that. And a big ass pile of dinner mints. I really don't think we're going to have much of a choice. This whole place is packed. They approach the first inn. Joseph knocks on the door, yet no one answers. Hello? Is anyone there? I'm looking for a place for my wife and me. She's pregnant and we need a place to stay for the census. Dude, I don't even know why you're trying. This place is a dump. And figure you'd be from a sh like this. My mama was right about you. Yo, useless ass might have been from comp. Please don't start that again. Let's just try and find somewhere to stay. They move on to the next inn. Joseph knocks. Hello? Is anyone there? We're looking for a place to stay. A voice comes out of the intercom. Hello, this is Carlton, your doorman. Who the hell was that? I don't want to stay at this place. What, what, what's wrong with this place? Are you trying to be difficult? Difficult? I'll show your ass difficult. You want me to hide the new King of Kings right here in the middle of the street? You suck, and Bethlehem sucks. That's right, Bethlehem sucks. When he's born, I'm going to forge a birth certificate and say he was born in Nazareth. Screw these bastards. As Mary and Joseph search for a place to stay, the three wise men make a stop on their way to Bethlehem. Say, man, ain't we supposed to be stealing, uh, I mean, bringing this baby some gifts? Well, he can have my CMA Entertainer of the Year award. No, oh, man, that ain't gonna cut it. This is Messiah, son. Say, hang on a minute. Out on the right, look over there. Ain't that a no oasis? Uh, oh, hell no! Man, that's a Bucky's. Hot damn! I've been craving some beaver nuggets. The three venerated magi approach the Bucky's. All right, well up. Let's get this baby some gifts. Uh, hey, is it ghost to get him a Stars and Bars do-rag? I mean, if he don't want it, I'll wear it. I love a goddamn do-rag. Man, I'm going to get him some scratch-offs. Baby loves scratch-offs. Ooh, you think the little baby savior likes genuine Texas beef jerky and fudge? Yeah, man, if there's one thing I know that everybody loves them some chocolate fudge. Oh, sweet. They got naked lady playing cards. I'm going to get him these and the copy of Ray Stevens' Camel Riding Sing-Along Song on cassette. You freaking mooks! You can't get the King of the Jews do-rags and scratch-offs. Grab that frankincense and that bird and let's get out of here. Oh, all right, fine. Well, I'm still getting this do-rag. Hey, Rufus. Yeah, man. What the hell is myrrh? Myrrh? Gotta think of it like high karate B.C. With their gifts in tow, the three wise men depart. As they begin the final leg of their journey toward Bethlehem, Mary and Joseph continue their struggle to find a place to stay. There's got to be some place in this dirtbag town to stay. Oh, no, no, no. Look, there's a Motel 6. Knock on that door. Joseph knocks. The light. They 
already turned off the goddamn light. All right, you bitches asked for it. Tom Bodet is my baby daddy. Tom Bodet is my baby daddy. Let's just keep going. It's getting late. Here, this this is the last inn in town. Joseph Knox, a strange man, answers the door. Good evening. How may I be of assistance? Excuse me, sir, but I'm in need for a room for my wife and I to stay in. We're in town for the census, and as you can see, she's very pregnant and getting a little testy. F*** off. You see what I mean? Are you the innkeeper? Indeed I am. My name is Conrad. I am Bethlehem's foremost attorney slash innkeeper slash beekeeper slash falconeer. I am the master of the house, doling out the charm, ready with a handshake and an open palm. Bitch, you stole that from that musical, uh, Les Mis. A charming young lady, I see. <laughs> Regrettably, there is no room in our inn tonight. However, I might be able to rent out space in our stables for the evening for the low cost of seventy-nine ninety-five plus city and state taxes. Oh, and a small fee, of course, for cleaning out the troughs and mangers. <laughs> stables? Yeah, that's fine. We'll take it. We'll take it. Oh, you ain't put me in no stables. I ain't having no equine, baby. Don't you get that man no money for a barn? Don't, 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 don't listen to her. We'll take it. We'll take it. You dumb sh- what I just tell you? I ain't having a Lord Lord sleep in a pile of donkey sh- A wise choice, sir. You may move your charismatic bride into our stables at your earliest convenience. I shall have my wife, Madam Hilton, fetch a porter for your luggage. Enjoy your stay. However, I must insist that you do not disturb our prize falcons. They have a court appearance in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, Joseph. Oh, Joseph, it's time. Oh, I feel the, I feel the baby coming. Oh, oh, quick. Call I-X-I-I. Call I-X-I-I. Joseph rushes Mary into the stables. As they prepare for the oncoming miracle, the three wise men finally make their way into Bethlehem. I'm tired of riding with you cracker-ass crackers. Man, this place is a dump. Why couldn't they have this messiah someplace classy, like Branson? To Missouri? Show some respect. He's the king of the Jews, not some king of the hayseeds. Yes, Lamil. I know, but I was hoping we could go see Yakov afterwards. Damn, that Russian. There's no time for that. We got to find the mother and the child. Fine, you buzzkill. From afar, the three wise men hear the sweet sound of the Virgin Mary's voice. Oh, 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 I feel it. Oh, I feel the baby. Oh, I feel the baby coming out. Oh, Jesus. Oh, gee! Oh! Hey, I just forgot what the name of the baby. Uh, I think we found her. We'll be back to the Russ Martin Show. We now return to the Russ Martin Show Christmas special. Say, hey, narrated dude, I hate to be picky and shit, but you know his name is Joseph. 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 Joe Sif. Joseph. Joe Sif. Joseph. 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 Oh, you go on. The three wise men have found Joseph and Mary and rush toward the stables where the Holy Mother is in full labor. Oh! Oh, oh God damn! Oh, s***! Oh, God damn! Joseph, get me some weed! Roll me a joint! We don't have any weed! Wrong move, son. Infuriated, the Blessed Virgin grabs a hold of Joseph's shirt. You listen to me, you little shit ass. I'm in the middle of having a messiah. If I tell you to get me some weed, you go get me some fucking weed. You go ask one of those three goofy shower curtain wearing motherfuckers standing in the doorway. You, you know they got weed. Hi, Mrs. Jesus' mom. I'm Luke Bryan. You can shut the hell up. I got other problems. Which one of y'all bitches is going to get between my legs and help me deliver this baby? Somebody got to catch the Lord Almighty. Uh, I, I have to I have to go get weed. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I also, I gotta go get the, the, the weed. Baby, don't look at me, girl. I ain't never put my head down there. I ain't about to start. Hey, man, I make Luke Bryan do it. He looks like he's done that before. Yeah, yeah, Luke Bryan, he's good at this. Well, I don't wanna, but I guess I could try. You shut your hillbilly ass up and get down there and tell me what's going on with, oh, with this baby. All right, but I can't guarantee any sort of... Oh, my God! Her vagina's open! Oh, oh, my God! It's like a doorway to a different dimension! I don't want to be here no more! Oh, damn! I can feel him coming out! As Mary's contractions continue, there are shakes all around them. 
A crowd begins to gather outside the stables. What the hell is going on? The earth's moving, there's a lady giving birth in a barn, and what are those two girls doing with that camel with one cup? Oh man, the wheels are coming off fast. <laughs> hey, Backwoods, pay attention here. What I do, do I push? I ain't never tried to shit out no beach ball before. Yeah, go ahead, but hang on, let me count. One, two, three, push! Push! And with that, a hush came over everyone in the stables, where they had just witnessed a miracle of the highest order. What's up, bitches? I have arrived. Wow, you can talk already? You're a smart baby. You're damn right, hillbilly. I'm the son of God. I preach the word of the Lord. Now... What the hell are you doing standing around like this? Well, baby Jesus, we brought you these gifts because we heard that you was being born. Gifts? I love gifts. All right. So what you got? Well, we got you some gold. Gold is cool. I love gold. We also got you some frankincense. Frankincense? What, what do I want that for? What am I supposed to do then? Burn it while I'm listening to Led Zeppelin 4? Uh, and, and finally, we got you some myrrh. M myrrh? What the hell is myrrh? See, that's what I said. Anybody else got any better gifts? A young girl steps forward. Hey, Jesus. I'm the little drummer girl. I'm here to play you a song on my drum. Well, at least we found a good actress. Come, they told me the rumba bum bum. I say, damn. I'm trying to bring you good news, and you can't even finish a damn drum solo for me? What kind of crap is this? You know what? Forget it. I'm going to go spread the word of God anyway. Get out of my way. It's time for my first sermon. Hey, that baby's still plugged in. What the hell? What am I still attached to? Oh, man, he's still attached to his umbilical cord. Uh, here, let me use my jig bone deer skinner. Thank you there, kind red dick. No problemo, little messiah. Now, where was I? Oh, that's right. I know all of you have been living in sin, so... <coughs> I said, I know all you been living in sin. Wow, this puberty hit fast. And I know all you been yearning to join my daddy God in the kingdom of heaven. Well, I'm here on this earth to ask you a question. You want to know what that question is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. I said, do you want to know what that question is? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to tell you what that question is. I'm here and I'm going to watch Earth like Hua Chen Kang from Kung Fu asking everybody that I meet just one thing. Are you ready for a miracle? Praise God. Praise the Jesus. I come today with a simple message, praise God. A message of love. A message of miraculous love. Tell them. And not hate. Are you ready for a miracle? No hate. Not riches, but the wealth of the Lord Almighty. And through me there is no despair. There is only hope. I said hope for a blessed life on earth and in heaven. Are you ready for a miracle? And do not judge. That's your job. You love one another. You help one another. You care for each other. Don't be an asshole. I said don't be an asshole. And you know when you be an asshole. Are you ready for a miracle? These are simple things. Don't just ask yourself, what would Jesus do? That ain't none of your business. Ask, what would you do if Jesus was watching? Unless you play it with yourself and that, let that one go. I'll let that one slide. Shut up, bitches. And now, here's Conway Twitty. Hello, darling. Nice to see you. It's been a I didn't fuck it around. Uh -oh. <clears throat> Ooh, damn, that was exhausting. So did all you understand what I'm trying to tell you? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's good. Mm -hmm. I'm really? I give you a sermon straight from my heart, and you all don't get it? And on top of that, you all give me a bunch of crap for my first day on this planet. This is the worst birthday ever. There ain't nothing else in my life that could be worse than what happened to me today. Man, I got bad news. <laughs> Merry 
Christmas, everybody. It's a good place to be, isn't it? I enjoy it. So is. You can work at a job where people are they get off for the holidays and they're already going, well, damn, I got to go back to work on the 5th or whatever. I appreciate the fact. Any closing statements? We do, Shante. I'll keep it simple just by saying this has been a very, very good year for all of us. And I'm proud to be a part of it. Kinsey? I feel honored to be here right now in this chair. Surprised you can still set up in it. <laughs> <laughs> and the Christmas special was absolutely amazing. And y'all are amazing. And I'm like the luckiest kid on the face of the planet. So thank you. Show us your No. <laughs> Come on, it's holidays. No. <laughs> All right. Lois. Uh, I'm just thankful that every morning I, I get up that uh, I get to come to a cool job. And thank you, Russ. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Alfie. Thank you, Kenzie, for a wonderful year. Alfie, I feel like crap. Hot. I'm sweaty. Good enough. Okay. <laughs> that man is eloquent. <laughs> you can tell he's the educated one out of the group. Uh-huh. <laughs> Alfie, closing comments this place <laughs> it's hot in here and i feel like <laughs> and i hope you all die and i lost all my acetaminophen in that poker game we had at 3 345 <laughs> i'm not kidding we were playing poker earlier for drugs i told him not to bluff <laughs> I'm fortunate that I've got a good staff, and every day I get to spend at least four hours a day with my friends. Okay. You want to try this? <laughs> there is no try. There is only do. I never practice this ahead of time. Yeah, we don't need that. to. We've got it. We've been doing it for like 10 years. Okay. All right, Kenzie. You just kind of jump in when you think you got to. Feel for it. Uh, I can't sing, y'all. Okay, then I'll just leave your mic off. Please just do. To, just enjoy the experience. I will. Okay, Dan, uh, brief synopsis. Brief synopsis. Back in uh, 2001, Shantae Mallard was driving home after a party, and she was arrested for DWI. I screwed it up already. Shantae Mallard was driving home after a party, and she ran into a homeless man who wedged into her windshield. She continued to drive home, parked in the garage, went inside, left the man wedged in her windshield for hours until he died. She was eventually convicted of his murder. And then we have no excuse for this song. Mm -hmm. Why did guy run over by Shante? He was walking home late one You can say there's no such thing as Shante. As far as why, why guys they believe She had been drinking too much whiskey At just 69 cents a throw And she'd been doing some exing She was one big fat doped up hoe When she drove on down the highway She veered off just a beat Next thing you know, old whitey's Head was lying next to her on the seat. Whitey got run over by Shante. He was walking home late one evening. You can say there's no such thing as Shante. As far as flying white guys, they believe. Now we're all so proud of Shante. She took it really well. When Whitey jumped through her windshield, she asked him to light her pomo. Now she pulls up in the driveway. And to the house she goes in. And Whitey stops and wonders, should he have really bought that lotto scratch and win? 
Why he got run over by Shante He was walking home late one evening You can say there's no such thing as Shante As far as flying white guys they believe Why he got run over by Shante He was walking home late one evening You can say there's no such thing as Shante as far as flying white guys, they believe. Happy motoring. This is the last part of the show. Rocks the Metroplex.